got enough data to report on what we've just been looking at. So, we've lost quite a bit, I think, from the... Um, we've lost quite a bit through minimizing and the process of distortion, I think, to some extent, of the education targets. We've left aside the 32 thematic indicators. If you look in there, you'll find the word free, for example. Well, we're not going to use it because the central global process doesn't engage it. So I think this process takes, um, or at least risks, does it? We'll talk about that in a moment. Does this risk taking ownership away from national goals or regional now, one of you has worked in UNESCO Bangkok, regional processes, or is the process of engagement so powerful that you get sucked into reporting in this global way? If you look at the issue of NORAG news, which relates to this, you'll see some interesting examples from all over the world of how particular countries, including a very interesting article on Pakistan, how the construction of Pakistan's own national agenda on education, how does it relate to this so-called global process? Does it mean, says the author, that we have to rethink how our, how can what we've just been doing over the last two or three years be reconceptualized in terms of what the UN has constructed, i.e., <coughs> to what extent do we have to pay attention to the SDG process at the national level? So there's some interesting examples, very sharp and critical illustrations of that, I think, in, in this. Um, and then there's some bigger questions here, aren't there? And these, these bigger questions run through all these claims to be creating international cooperation. There are claims that are, um, I think, key to the understanding of the aspirations and ambitions of the UN at this point. So if you were from Africa, as Edward is, you will know that the African Union has set up its own set of targets, its own target process. 1963 seems a long way away, doesn't it? You probably don't know why they chose 63, do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, 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 I think they chose it for a simple reason. It's a hundred years since, in Haile Selassie's time, the Organization for African Unity was founded in Addis Ababa. hundred years. So whether that's a good way to set a target date, um, you know, is, 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 is debatable. But how, how do these targets, despite what I read out from the communique, where China and the UN are in the same uh, Education 2030 process, it certainly needs analysis then in a blog that somebody here could write. Um, but um, how, how does China relate to um, this kind of process, a country that has its five-year plans? What was the legal position on this? Some people here might know about that. What, to what extent is this UN process something you have to conform to? Do you, do you have to report? You see, if you don't report, if Uganda doesn't report, if Pakistan doesn't report, India does, you know, lots of issues. You know. So there are questions behind any global governance agenda. Who, who is, who is, who has created this? And I think the old question in Latin, qui bono, to whose, for whose benefit is this being created? For whose benefit? Uh, for the United Nations? Um, you could argue the UN really needs the SDGs. I mean, there was, for doing the MDGs, the UN had an amazing architecture of national 
MDG analysis, reconstructing the data. So, arguably, the, S the UN really needs the SDG. Um, a little word about, therefore, pulling this together at the end. Um, it's certainly more participatory, this process. Despite what we've said about the um, construction of the indicators. But a great deal of it is still based in the North, if we can use those terms. And how, how global are they, the goal on the targets? How, um, there are claims that they're universalist, but are they for all the countries? Are they for Japan? Are they for um, Germany? Almost all the goals, if you look carefully at them, and I'm sure you could do some useful textual analysis, if you look carefully at them, almost all of them are still going to focus on the South. If you, if you look at the text of the 17 goals and their many targets, and you just do a, a word check, you'll find that these terms, developing countries and least developed countries, occur over a hundred times, including the education goal and its targets. And by contrast, the terms developed countries only occurs in two or three of the bills. So it, it, despite the claims that this is the world's agenda, this is for all of us, not like the old days, most people, I think, most development agencies uh, probably thought that the MDGs and the Dakar goals were for them, for the for the um, for the South, for the developing world. But we were going to make this really different, weren't we? The, the SDGs were going to be because they were it, across such an important range of issues. They were going to be for the whole world. For Japan, for South Korea, for North Korea, for, for the UK. So I think it would be worth thinking about your own country and considering whether that is the case. I mean, I've, we've looked, as we, we live in the in, in UK, you know that place, UK? Um, we live in UK, and if you look at how they decided to implement, review, and monitor the whole process of the SDGs, the whole process, not just SDG 4. Which ministry has got it? The ministry responsible for the work. Not the Ministry of Education, not the Ministry of Health, not the Ministry of Concerned with environment, but DFID, DFID, some of you will know the name, the Department for International Development. So they're responsible for the SDGs, which rather suggests, doesn't it, that some people in Britain still consider that this particular UN process is connected to our aid agency. I wonder what China thinks about that. I wonder what Japan thinks. Well, we've got some of the answers to that in this issue of no revenues. Because we've got people from Japan and from different uh, countries. The countries who have an aid agency as well as, a, as their national ministries of education, health, whatever. So to see whether India thinks that this process is for them. And they, I think the answer is that they do. This, they, India has been running a whole series of sustainable development conferences on each of these goals in, in a new organization under the Modi government. But what is not clear, is because India is a donor, all right? India gives money to many parts of the world and a, uh, expertise, scholarships, has it 
constructed its aid program in ways that are connected to this process. And what about Pakistan? What about other countries that those of you in the room here will know about? China in particular. I think China, China's aid to, to many countries in the world is very much higher education to do with scholarships, Confucius Institutes, building, they don't build primary schools on the whole China. They build, they help countries to build universities, uh, technical universities, science universities. So how, how, do they, how, do this, how does this discourse about the new global, if we can call it that, how does that relate to what countries are doing in in, um, with this new agenda. And if you look at the most complicated goal of all, and, you know, 4.7, the very fact that it is so demanding, I think it's a positive thing. It's hugely difficult to construct a simple indicator for goal, for target 4.7. Global citizenship, education for sustainable development, education for peace, human rights, etc., etc. That doesn't mean it's not a good idea. I mean, the fact that it's demanding and very hard to do is a positive thing, I would say. So I want to end by a, a, a suggestion that we be more humble about what we're doing at, at the global level. And this is a quote from a chap who only perhaps one of you in the room will know, that's Mark Mason because Jonathan Jansen is one of South Africa's most uh, critical policy analysts. He's, he's been the director of uh, one of the key universities in South Africa. And he's now, I think, in USA for the time being. But, I mean, he's written a very interesting article several years ago when we were discussing targets. And I think what he says about the need for us to be humble and honest about what is, what's behind the target process? What, 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 what's the philosophy of the construction of targets at the global level? I mean, on, for whose benefit are we doing those? So I think that that's a, a fitting uh, final comment to just say to ourselves, you know, if you think about the history of targets and global goals, what what exactly uh, are we what are we engaged with philosophically, sociologically, pedagogically, and in terms of our own daily work as researchers and teachers? So um, let me leave it there. I put at the bottom a couple of short articles from this issue of NORAC News. By the way, NORAC News is also in Chinese, for those of you who want to look at that. Um, not all of us know what sustainable development goals are in Cantonese or in Putonghua. I did say to Emily that I would ask her to say in Cantonese what sustainable development goals are. Can you say it? But it doesn't matter, you know, English is better. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we won't quote you on that. But, but I mean, the, 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 point, the point of Claudio de Muro Castro's um, little article, it's one of the shortest articles in NORAG News, is he, um, I wrote to him as the editor of this thing, I said, uh, well, please do an article uh, on SDGs in Brazil. He's from Brazil. So he wrote back and said, sorry, Ken, what, what does it stand for? <laughs> uh, and then he said, and then I told him what it stood for. So then he, he put that into Portuguese. And he, he did a check. How many times did Mr. Google uh, recognize SDGs in Portuguese, as opposed to his own name, Claudio de Moura Castro? Well, he won hands down. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, of course, mean anything, but there were so many more hits for Claudio de Muro Castro than there were for SDGs. Uh, 
in, in, in Portuguese. Um, and then the other person I mentioned here, Desmond Burney, uh, and there's another person here who's the head of UNICEF in Beijing, Margot Sullivan. She said to her <coughs> students, you know, what, do you, have you heard about this term? Nobody knew. But then, but then you know, um, Desmond says the same thing. He says, look, they may not know this terminology, but they've got a very good sense about how, what quality in teaching is about. What is quality in early childhood in terms of UNICEF terms is about. So the process of, of following this complicated discourse as opposed to being sure in your country about what is quality. His Desmond Birmingham's article is about Uganda, by the way, and about teacher education in Uganda. And he makes this point that do the SDGs matter a, a teacher's view? And, and it's a very interesting thought about this tension between the construction of the global on the one hand and the determination at the level of school, university, skill development 